The Renaissance in Nusadua is an unorthodox beach resort. For one thing, it's not on the beach. Though staying here does give you access to a pretty nice stretch of sand. The hotel's design is contemporary, but it abounds with touches of traditional Balinese design. The chic design might make you think of a nightclub, but the resort is family friendly. Does all of this contrast make for an exceptional experience, or is this hotel too much for its own good? Let's go inside and find out. Hey, this is JR, aka The Tourist. Welcome to the Renaissance Bali Nusa Dua. Grab a welcome drink and join me inside. We'll check in and check out the room and the rest of the property. Along the way, I'll tell you what I paid for my room and what you might like and might not like so much about this resort. Then you can decide for yourself if the Renaissance Bali Nusa Dua is the resort for you. Do remember, this is not a review, but merely my impression of the property. Let's dive right in and head to the room. As we make our way, I'll say a bit about the hotel's location. Nusa Dua is on the eastern side of Bali's southern peninsula. It is an area of five-star resorts and quiet beaches. The Renaissance Nusa Dua sits on a hilly area, removed from the beach, but looking down towards the Indian Ocean. The resort is new, opening in late 2021, and has 388 rooms and suites. I booked a deluxe sea view room, which I will talk more about in a moment. Welcome to room 1628. My room has two queen beds. As there were three of us, the queen beds were a selling point among the area's many resorts, many of which only had twin beds. There is no sofa or proper desk in the room, but there is a comfortable rocking chair and a table that can be used for dining or work. Some aspects of the room are a little too contemporary, but the traditionally tinged touches help to ground the overall design of the room. This distinctive cabinet is the minibar, which is adequately stocked. Complimentary bottled water is available and refreshed by housekeeping. The coffee option is drip bags, which makes a decent tasting if somewhat weak cup. There's Bintang, Indonesia's largest selling beer, and a basic assortment of soft drinks in the fridge. The lounger on the balcony is some consolation for there being no couch, though it's not always pleasant to be sitting outside, especially in the wet season when it can be quite humid. I read mixed reviews on the room views. One review implied the partial sea view room had no sea view whatsoever. Others mentioned rooms facing a garbage dump. With that in mind, I booked a full sea view room. The hotel is about a mile and a half from the beach. Given the location, I can't complain about this view. The rooms across the hall from mine face the driveway leading to the lobby. This is where we may begin to see some differences in opinion. The bathroom is open, fitting with the Renaissance's brand identity, something I will say more about in a moment. It is distinctive, but when the curtain is open, the bathtub is right out there in the room. It is a very nice bathtub, but I'm not sure I understand the desire to have it almost in the middle of the room. 
I get that some people like the open bathroom plans, but it's not to my taste, and I tend to see this as a cost-saving measure disguised as chic design. The shower stall is a good size and features both a rain head and a handheld. The bath products are by Argus, a brand I am unfamiliar with, and the body wash, shampoo, and conditioner are attached to the wall in refillable bottles. There is also a bar of soap, which I appreciate. The toilet does have a built-in bidet, something I appreciate as well. Here is how the bathroom looks with the curtain closed. It's mostly private, but there was a gap between the curtain and the wall. Also, though the curtain blocks the line of sight, it does much less for sound. So yes, you will hear people going to the bathroom. We'll head down through the lobby and have a look at the swimming pools. For those unfamiliar with Renaissance, it is a Marriott brand. As a result of numerous acquisitions over its near 100 year history, Marriott has 31 hotel brands. These brands are split into select, luxury, and premium, roughly equating to four star, basic five star, and luxury. Brands are further split into classic and distinctive categories. Renaissance is in that mid-level premium category and one of their distinct brands. So think of the Renaissance brand as a Marriott with more personality or a slightly down market W. With the latter comparison in mind, the design and layout choices will make more sense. I'll take this opportunity to note that the service here varies from good to excellent. The staff manages to strike the correct balance between attentive and non-intrusive. The lobby looks out in the direction of the main pool. This seating here is serviced by our bar, the hotel's lobby bar. Directly below this area are two of the hotel's restaurants. From here we'll head to the pool, and after that I'll talk more about the food and beverage. The property is also home to a Marriott Vacation Club, Marriott's timeshare brand. There is a sales desk here in the lobby, and someone did engage me in a conversation about it once, but I simply said that I wasn't interested, and he backed off. No hard sell. The Renaissance Nusadua has four pools. The main pool is called the Atomic 17 Pool, named for the Atomic 17 Bar. There was no shortage of lounge chairs during the three days I spent here, but it was quite overcast as this was the rainy season. The resort was designed by Singapore-based architects Ong and Ong. The following is from their website. Paying homage to the local culture, building placements are modeled after traditional Balinese village settings where there are courtyards and clustered spaces in between buildings. The villas are positioned on a different level in correspondence to the contour to ensure that every villa has an unblocked view while the four-story hotel is located as a backdrop for the villas. I cannot attest to there being no unblocked views. I can say that the resort does achieve this feeling of courtyards and clustered spaces. These day beds are a big feature of the Renaissance's pools. We'll be seeing more of them in a moment. Do you enjoy quiet, early morning walks through verdant, lustily landscaped grounds? Me too. What a coincidence. Consider subscribing to my channel, and this could be the first of many walks we share. Join me, and we'll tour the world together. Coming around this corner, we find the most peaceful lap pool that I've ever encountered.
Heading down the stairs here, we find the jungle pool. This is one of the more interesting areas of the hotel. Back behind the Atomic 17 bar, we find the stairs leading down to the kids' pool. Although kids' pool is a bit of a misnomer, it's really a children's pool for very young kids. As with the main pool upstairs, there are plenty of loungers. Around the corner from these day beds is a restroom, and then we come to Lava Land, the kids club, which hosts a variety of activities both here at the clubhouse and in other areas of the hotel. Although the hotel is located about a mile and a half from the beach, it does have a beach club, which can be reached via hotel shuttle van. I had a look around Nusa Dua during my few days here, and this is one of the nicer stretches of beach. The Renaissance Nusa Dua has no shortage of food and beverage options. This is a plus. While I appreciate the range of food options, I can't give such high marks for the food itself. Returning to the lobby, we'll start at the R bar. The bar claims panoramic views of Nusa Dua Beach. As you've seen, the seats do have very pleasant views of the pool, but views of the beach are a stretch. Directly below the lobby are two of the hotel's three full-service restaurants, Backstage Food Theater and Tana La. Both restaurants feature an international menu with Tana Lot being the more high concept of the two. The breakfast buffet is served in both restaurants and you are free to go back and forth. According to staff, Tana Lot was supposed to have healthier options of the two, but I couldn't see all that much difference between what was on either side. My assessment of the food is based mainly on the breakfast buffet. I didn't eat dinner at either of these restaurants and I didn't try the Chinese restaurant upstairs, which we'll see after this. The quality of food was fine, but I found most of what I ate to be aggressively mediocre. For instance, one night I ordered some beef rendang sliders from the R bar, and they were fine. But as rendang is an Indonesian dish, I expected more. I expected something really delicious. I can't say if it's the range of options available that leads to nothing being truly great, or if the food has been purposefully made bland to accommodate a largely foreign clientele. I don't know. And again, the food is not bad, just a bit on the mediocre side. For many, the size and selection of what is on offer will be enough to satisfy.
Back upstairs, just past the R bar, is Lion X, the Chinese restaurant, featuring Cantonese and Sichuan cuisine. Now that you've had your fill, let's go and see where you can work off some of this food. As I said earlier, these are my impressions and this is not a review. That said, I do want to give you some indication of whether or not the Renaissance is the right resort for you. And so I'm introducing a new feature. Without further ado, the tourist do's and don'ts. Do stay at the Renaissance New Sedua if you're traveling with family and want a room with two queen beds. If you enjoy the kind of contemporary, somewhat whimsical but thoughtful design on offer, or if you're looking for a new hotel in that mid-level five-star category. However, if you want to be right on the beach, if you need more privacy than the open bathroom plan affords, or if you have high food standards, then the Renaissance New Sedua might not be for you. Please let me know if this is helpful, or if you've been here and have differing opinions. As this is Bali, the spa is quite beautiful. I do not have any treatments though, so I can't speak on that. I did use the gym, and it's a nice sized gym for the property, with a good mix of cardio and strength training options. This is as good a place as any to end our look at the Renaissance Bali New Sedua. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.